In Europe, the Second World War erupted in September 1939, but it came as no surprise. For weeks, the combatants' navies had been preparing for hostilities. This capped years of planning, stockpiling, and training for war. It was a colossal struggle between empires. Great Britain was the largest, holding sway over subjects in Africa, Asia, and elsewhere, lodged between the North Sea the Norwegian Sea, and the North Atlantic. Her home islands relied on those colonies as well as imports from trading partners. By virtue of being an island nation, Great Britain enjoyed relative safety from land invasion, but that same virtue was also a vulnerability. The empire relied on a vast network of sea trade. Twenty years earlier, that trade was targeted by Germany's navy, nearly collapsing Britain's economy. Cruisers, armed merchant vessels, and submarines sortied from Wilhelmshaven and other ports to raid that trade, forcing the Royal Navy to impose a convoy system as well as a vigorous blockade. The North Sea soon became treacherous water, its coastlines rigged with mines and patrolled on the water and in the air. That blockade proved effective, starving the German economy of imports and bottling up her surface fleet. The new war opened with the old war fresh in the minds of naval planners. Britain sought to bottle up the Kriegsmarine once again, while Germany sought to apply its naval assets against Britain's trade network. Soon, however, the new war proved to be a very different war. By July 1940, both France and Norway were in the hands of Nazi Germany, now expanding its own empire. French ports now harbored German assets, and the blockade of the North Sea was compromised by the Kriegsmarine's control of Norwegian ports. Atlantic Chase depicts the war in the North Sea, the Norwegian Sea, and the North Atlantic during the crucial period from 1939 to 1942. It is not a game about U-boats. Its focus is on the surface fleets of Britain's Royal Navy and Germany's Kriegsmarine. Although Germany's most lethal weapon against Britain's convoys proved to be the submersible vessel, that devastating weapon was not powerful enough to collapse Britain's war economy on its own. The Kriegsmarine's small but potent fleet of surface vessels, especially its modern battlecruisers and battleships, had a chance to tip the balance and force more of the Royal Navy's assets home. Had German assets been employed differently, had chance encounters happened differently, Britain may have found herself at Germany's mercy. This game explores that balance of power. Atlantic Chase explores the struggle between the home fleet and the Kriegsmarine at an operational scale. Ships are organized into task forces, and the game presents the war as a series of scenarios, each depicting a sortie by German surface assets targeting British trade. Fifteen scenarios are designed for solitaire play, where the player takes the role of the Royal Navy in some and the Kriegsmarine in others. The game also presents two-player scenarios, as well as a two-player campaign system. The game emphasizes the role information played in structuring naval conflict during World War II. Inspired by the pins and strings adorning naval charts in places like the basement under the new public offices in London housing the cabinet war offices. The game board of Atlantic Chase represents not the ocean, but those charts in the map room and other rooms like them. A task force on the game board is represented by either a trajectory or a station, either a line or a point. The task force on the game board represents information on a chart, and players perform actions intended to glean information about their own and the enemy's naval assets. 
when a task force is represented as a trajectory, information about it is lacking. Neither player knows for sure where the task force is, only that it is somewhere between this end and this other end. When represented as a station, players have more information. They know that task force is somewhere in the stretch of ocean represented by this hexagon. Atlantic Chase challenges the player to engage enemy naval assets on favorable terms. When a player has the initiative, they perform actions by activating one or more task forces. Most actions provide the opponent a chance to grab the initiative and perform actions of their own. In this way, initiative swings back and forth until one player achieves their operational objectives or forces their opponent under the sea.